Mark Taylor, this Christian man who wrote a prophecy back in 2011 about Donald Trump. And everything in this prophecy has come true, minus the media lining up and agreeing with him. Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Keenan Bridges, and this is something more. I'm so delighted today to have a very special show with my very special guest, Sister Mary Colbert and Brother Mark Taylor. This is going to be amazing. You don't want to miss this. And uh, we're, we are talking about something that affects every single person in this nation. I believe that our nation is on the cusp of one of the greatest moves of God we've ever seen in human history. But it is very important that you know some key things as it relates to what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. So good. How you guys doing? Oh, Thank you for having good afternoon. Great. Good to Excited. see you. Absolutely. Excited. God bless you. Awesome. Bless you. Thanks for being here today. Um, you guys have some very powerful things you want to share with us today. But I want to start by, you know, going into sort of the genesis of all of this. So where did this start? What did God begin to say to you that kind of started this whole prophetic thing about our president and where we are today? Well, I did, uh, I was a retired lieutenant with the city of Orlando Fire Department for about 20 years. And about two years before I retired in 2006, I started getting sick. I started mm. getting depression and stuff. He's actually just a really good study in normal. I didn't go back. Look at what he says, sick, the eyebrow above, his eye on the left. I was sick, so I started getting sick. I started slight, slight movement up, emphasis on sick. And it goes right back down, because that's normal. He's a little nervous, got our hands in front of us. He's tied into himself. Yeah, but he's, he's on TV. It's, it's, it's totally acceptable for this nervousness and this stress. Started getting depression and stuff like that. Then Let me see the little opening with his hands when he sick. did it. I started getting depression and stuff. So he's starting mentally to open up. You see that? So he wants to open up. He wants to talk freely. It's just that stress. I'm on TV. People are watching me. Something I've said, and I hope I got it right. Stuff like that. Didn't think a whole lot about it. I went to the doctor, and he kind of prescribed me some antidepressants. Well, I had retired in 2006, and about a month. And he's doing a good search of his brain. He's going through all the memories, the emotional memories, the doing memories, the visual memories, all of it. The kind of thing that you like to see when you see someone, you know they're being honest. He's telling you the story and he's making sure. He said this many times. This is not his first interview. It's not his first rodeo telling, but he still checks because he wants to be honest. He wants to make sure he has it right. After I retired, I started going to an apostolic church at the mm. time. And I had a visitation from the Lord. Hmm. And in that visitation, uh, the Lord had uh, showed me some things that I was going to write. And because I was in the visitation, I would have light coming out of my finger and out of my hand, stuff mm. like that. And uh, wow. so the Lord had assigned an angel to me as well in that visitation. And his body sings with him. He has memory on it. His body sings. He's relaxed. He's not saying, believe me, believe me, believe me. There's no believe me look. There's emphasis. And that's it. This is a good study in normal. Well, after that visitation, I had started getting sick. And you see how that focus comes in right there. It's not he's not looking at Kenan. He's kind of looking past him and inwardly because he's not it's not a focus far out. The pupils don't constrict in that sense. Well, after that visitation, I had started getting sick, really bad sick. About five months, I took a nosedive. I was bedridden for four or five. Good emphasis and eyebrows. They are not staying up and believe me, believe me, believe me. He's still a little nervous. His host, the interviewer, is listening politely. He's probably giving good nods, but we don't really see him that much. For days at a time. I couldn't eat for four and five days at a time. Mm. 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 That's not disrespect. That's I'm listening. Mm. Yeah, that's that's rough. And I went to doctor after doctor. They couldn't find out what was wrong with me. So this went on for like four. You see the head movements, positive head movement. So he's listening which should help him to at least somewhat relax or not increase his anxiety or stress. Five years, the anxiety, the depression was just crushing. I mean, it was just literally like going through hell, basically. Hmm. Now, the interviewer, this is another good one, is giving the look of empathy. I like the look of empathy. You got the furrow and the eyebrows. They come, they're not like squeezed in hard. It's just a nice soft furrow in. Like, wow, that's that's bad. You also hear the the audible as like, hmm, that's bad. 
And then the positive have movements of, and it's like, wow, they're softer. They're not hard. They're not dismissive. And the good eye contact of a listener. So I had finally, I found a doctor that kind of knew what he was doing and he started getting me back to health. And then he had left and then went on to something else. And I had to find a new doctor. And that's when I found Dr. Colbert, Mary's husband. <laughs> and uh, so I had. And smiles with him. So I found Dr. Colbert. He's smiling to the lady next to him to, you know, here she is. And the interviewer, because he's a good interviewer, he smiles with him like, yeah, because the reciprocal, like, oh, yeah, you smile. I want to smile. It makes us both feel good. It should help us both relax. And about 2011, when I was still seeing the first doctor, I wrote something called the, the Commander Chief Prophecy. Mm. And it was um, I was sitting in front of the TV. Now he's got memory on it. He's going in depth. That look where he's not really, he's not focused, pinpoint on something past Keenan. It's whether an inward where he's remembering something. Yeah, I was sick at the time. And I saw Donald Trump on TV. And he was in an interview like on Fox News or something like that. And I was listening to him. And then all of a sudden, I heard the voice of the Lord say, you're hearing the voice of a president. So I got up. I went into my bedroom, which I converted to an office. And uh, I put pen to paper like the Apostle Paul. Mm. And I just listened to what the Holy Spirit was telling me. And I wrote the Trump prophecy. And there he goes. You're seeing him sit there and access those different memories where that goes. The doing, the emotional part, a little bit of visual, and then that inward, that inwardness where that memory is being held. It's that RAM part where he holds on to it. That's why he doesn't really have to dig too much and why he can look out and it be just there. This is the end of the snippet. The full version of the video can be viewed at bombardsbodylanguage.com. The link is in the description, where you can also sign up to view exclusive crime series of videos that delve into the minds of some of history's most notorious criminals. Your subscriptions ultimately are what allow Mandy to keep making videos full time. A big thank you to all of my supporters.